Hello and welcome back to another Demi Talon tutorial. We are going to recreate a sound very similar to this, so in the Super Soul variety. Just to give it a bit more character, we're going to add some little techniques that I use to give it a bit more snap, a bit more bite, and just generally stand out from the other Super Souls that you can use in your trans projects. And this is a prime example here of making things a little bit snappier and hitting a little bit harder. So let's get stuck in. So I'm going to close that and let's just duplicate this and then we've got the automation here already and we'll uh, solo that, uh, mute that one so we've got this one only and we'll set it to 150 so you can see it here on screen. All right, so let's uh, menu and initialize preset. All right, so we now have this. Okay, so to keep things simple, we are just going to use the basic shapes. You can explore with other, uh, there's, there's plenty in there, other saw waves and uh, PWMs and all sorts. So just take your pick and try what uh, sounds good for you. But we are going to use the basic shapes. I'm going to adjust the wavetable. So we've got our saw and then the same again here. Uh, where are we? Basic shapes. Okay, so now we have this. And the first thing that I always like to do is get the filter set up. Uh, this is always like my go-to area. So I'm going to do an MG24 and route both oscillators to that. Okay, so we've got it routed through and we'll adjust these drive and fat knobs later on once we've got the sound started. So, uh, first things first, let's chuck the unison up here to 16 on each. I'm just going to bring the detune down, and then on one of them I'm going to increase the blend. So the main sound is now not the centre focus, it's actually the detuned section. And that one... If you did that, it's more of the center frequency. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it down to about there. That sounds about good. And what we're going to do is use various techniques here to give it a bit of a crispier sound. So that sounds like a standard uh, super saw that you'd get. And we've only got two oscillators on here, but we can make it sound uh, pretty fat. Um, so what we're going to do is a little bit of shaping first, and what I'm going to do is give it a bit more of that. A bit shorter than that, just so it's got a bit of release on the end of it. And we're going to shape that after we've done envelope two. So first things first, I always create the filter down part. So set the filter where you want. And there we are, we've suddenly got a shape that we can manipulate here to create a nice, what I would call the bubble effect. It's got that nice, short, stabby, bubbly sound to it. So it's about right there. Just give it a bit more release. Okay, so we've got the two things set up there, and then I'm just going to set up a mod wheel, uh, mod wheel, macro knob here to filter in. Okay, and we'll label that filter. So that is my usual procedure to get to this stage. So let's keep this filtered off. And what we can do now is we can start beefing the sound up a little bit. We can have some reverb and all that sort of thing. So first things first, let's get a feel for the sound by adding some reverb. I'm going to use Hall Reverb here. Okay, so that is the first part, um, and we're going to throw on some delay as well. And what we're going to do with the delay is put it onto eighth notes, and then I'm going to throw it onto dotted. Ping pong, 
Obviously, all these settings can be done how you like them. Yeah, so we've got a bit. That's enough feedback. We don't need to adjust the feedback there. So now we have... And I'm going to add some EQ on here. It's just dampened the sound a little bit on the highs. About three decibels will do. That sounds good. It's added that nice snappiness back into it. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drop one of these one octave. So the one that we reduced the blend on, I'm going to drop. In fact, that's going to go too low for this particular. Yeah, so we're going to up this one that's got more blend. Okay, so now we've got uh, a little bit more dynamic range, other than, as opposed to this. Just bring the level down a tad. In fact, let's just... Yeah, that sounds better. Just reduce the bass elements a little bit. Okay. So we've got our basic shape, we've put some delay, reverb and EQ, and you could call it a day here, that's pretty nice sound. But what we're going to do is add a few little automation things that we can do to just give it a bit more movement. And the first thing we're going to do is add some noise. I'm going to use air can, I can find air can on here. We are air can one. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to route the noise through to there. And to give it a little bit more background detail, I'm going to use one of these LFOs. So if we add that on there and just set it to go up to 50% of the audio level, and we're going to set the speed a little bit faster. Fact, let's just keep it on quarters for a second. I'm going to try and time this well here. So I'm just going to create a little gate for the sound here. And it doesn't have to be perfect unless you uh, want to be absolutely spot on. But now we've got a bit of a transgate thing going on here. So let's have it on trigger. And what this gives is if you hold the note, it keeps that uh, white noise pulsing a little bit. So, but we're not doing that. So about 50%, that sounds good. Okay, so we've added some top end. So there's a little bit too much white noise in there, so I'm just gonna reduce it. Just a little bit further, just to taste. Okay, that'll do. So that's the first thing we can do. Now we're going to use envelope 3 to control some distortion and some EQ. And on the distortion, I'm going to use the high pass. I'm just going to bring this down to about 100 hertz, about there. Let's use hard clip. Bring it down to a level that is appropriate. I'm just going to bring this up a tad, about 150. Okay, and we're going to use the envelope to automate two things. So let's just give it a short, stabby feel and add this to the mix. So let's just bypass this effect. Okay, so you can see it's taken away some of the top end. It sounds a, a little bit less polished on the top end. That's because we're introducing some more hard clip distortion here. 
So I'm just going to add a little bit in. It's just helping to add some texture into the sound. It's not necessarily a noticeable effect, but it just gives that edge of everything else. And at the same time, we can use the EQ with the same envelope, and we can automate the gain of the high frequency. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll bypass this a couple of times so you can hear what's going on, um, and then we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so we're getting quite a lot here, but it's a very sensitive EQ. So let's just bring the level down because we increased the level by 3 dB before. So let's increase it by one and then take it up to about three, which is about there. Okay, so now we're adding a little bit, I'm just going to drop this bass here as well, I forgot to do that. Um, we're adding some top end detail which gives that initial hit a little bit more clout than it would do if it was just uh, playing at the normal level. So there's a little bit too much distortion on there. So we've added some texture in there, which sounds really good. Uh, we could add all other things in there, some chorusing to give a bit of width on there. But uh, that is usually where I would end up to get something that is a little bit different than the norm. Uh, and then you can go one step further. There are a few other tools that you can use. You can use the LFOs to start doing some panning. Uh, you can set this to a certain rate like one bar and have these panning the opposite direction so you just give a little bit of width you could increase the speed so it's faster and you can't really tell it's moving um, you can obviously use the uh, modulation section here and automate that to shift things about but you will change the tonality of the sound and we are talking super source at the moment uh, with the velocity that is probably one of my favorite ones uh, if we just give it a nice kind of steep curve there and what we can do is we can drag the velocity to the cutoff here. So if we just drag it to zero where it's not actually affecting the sound, we can introduce um, some key tracking elements. So if we hit key tracking here, we can give it a little bit more clout. So that is with the out. Let's just wait till it gets back to its uh, starting point. So this is without. This is with. So it just gives you a little bit more of an edge over your sound. It gives it a little bit more tailorability and you can control how quiet you want that to get. Uh, so we could drag the cutoff down there. That sounds pretty good. So it has a little bit more of a clout as well when it's filtering in there. So I'm just going to turn up the master volume again. So let's put on a bit of sub here. So I'm using the subsection to add just a standard saw wave into the uh, kind of the mix of these two oscillators so you can treat it as a third oscillator uh, if you don't want to use it as a sub because as you can see if we go down one more here and just listen it's just too low for the position of the MIDI data at the moment to get that sound. So have it there as a third layer. And that is really, if you look at the blend, that's introducing that middle harmonic in a little bit more, and you can control that. 
So things can go against the grain a little bit. You can use the sub as an extra oscillator. There's not many controls. You could set it to direct out or to go through the filter. And really all that could rely on is the drive and fat uh, section here. And that's something that we didn't use. Uh, but again, you can use that and then tailor it in with the mix knob. So that concludes making a super saw with a little bit of a difference and a little bit of edge. And obviously, like I said before, you can go into all of these waveforms and you can start experimenting and creating some really, really nice warm uh, super saws to use in your next trans project. So um, I'll put this in the description. You can grab this one for free. Uh, head over to the website and you can download any of the other presets that are there for free and also if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and if you hit the bell you'll get notifications for Monday, Wednesday and Thursday when I upload and anything in between. If you enjoyed the video hit the like button and also drop me a comment I do get back to everybody. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.